If you want to get serious about building Power BI reports, you're going to want to learn the programming language of R. R allows us to incorporate a lot of different visualizations that can be written in R that aren't supported natively by Power BI. So with that said, let's go ahead and start diving into our data. We are looking at the widely available call data set. Uh, this stands for cholesterol. It's basically a data set taken showing different patients, ages, uh, blood types, their cholesterol number, their height, and a couple other columns like if they're a smoker or not. Here's just a little visual of the data their cholesterol number and their age and their blood type and their height all shown in table form. We have a couple of slicers showing the blood type of the patient and if they were smokers or not. So let's go ahead and dive into our first R visual. So let's click the R on here. You'll have to probably accept that you want to enable scripting. Uh, and this is actually the R script editor. So whenever you start with a visual, it'll bring up this little window. Um, and in order to actually script, you're going to want to bring in data from your data set. So take an age and throw in all of the different columns in order to be able to script. See, now you can actually type down here. So that's cool. Let's bring in the other columns. And we are going to want to make sure that they're not summarized. So all of the numeric ones shouldn't be summarized. So let's go through and just click do not, oh sorry, just click do not summarize um, for all that we can. And we also don't want title. Um, that was just the title on the page. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. Cool, and now we have our data set in R. And you can see by default, data set is a data frame of everything we're passing in. So to show a histogram, just to get our feet wet, let's go ahead and write hist and throw in our data set and give it the column name, which we'll use age. And let's see what that looks like. Go ahead and click the run button. And there's our first R visual. That is a histogram of our data using age as the X axis. So that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and uh, make this a little bit better. We can use a package called ggplot. Uh, it's actually called ggplot2, and what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to in install this package. So to run these R visuals, you're going to have R and have to have R installed. And in order to install other packages in the R command line, all you have to do is type in install dot packages and in parentheses and um, and double quotations. Write ggplot2. That will install everything that you need for ggplot2. So let's go ahead and add our first example of a histogram using ggplot. Uh, in order to import the library, you're going to have to type in library ggplot2. That brings in everything from ggplot2 into our use. Uh, so basically what we want to do now is type in ggplot, and we're going to want to pass in our data set. We're going to have to use the AES function, which is basically telling your plot uh, the x-axis, the y-axis, and colors. Um, everything in the AES function needs to be a variable, so x equals, it must be um, a variable from our data set. So data set, money, uh, age. So that will give us just um, our plot, kind of setting it up. Uh, we put a plus on the end because we want to add a geom, G-O-E-M, or sorry, G-E-O-M underscore histogram. So basically this tells your ggplot that you want a histogram. So let's go ahead and run it. And you see an awesome looking histogram. Uh, it looks a little di bit different because ggplot is using different bin sizes, so that's why it looks a little different from the original hist. Uh, but that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and add a little more, um, a little more flair to this, make it look pretty good. So we're going to want to add an AES function inside this geom histogram, and we are going to want to set the fill equal to dot dot count dot dot. So that's basically saying um, change the color to show for the different counts. And you get a pretty awesome looking histogram just like that. That actually looks pretty sweet. So you see the um, the ones with bigger counts show higher blue. Uh, if we wanted to change those colors to what we want, let's add a plus and one more function on the tail end of this. It will be scale underscore fill underscore gradient. And we're going to want to pass in uh, the low, which we're gonna set to blue and we're going to want to set the high equal to red. And this will change 
our scale to show different colors. Now let's run that. And now we see we have like this awesome looking, uh, this awesome looking histogram totally customized to how we want. And it's cool because this histogram is going to interact with our slicers on our page. So click on A for blood type and you see a totally different histogram based on our slicer selections. So that's really awesome as well. We can click on type blood O and if they smoke a pipe and you see an awesome histogram just for that selection. So that looks pretty cool. And um, our visuals are such an important part of Power BI. If you want to add a lot of flexibility to your report, this adds a total, like, this adds a lot of um, different plots that you can add using R scripting. Um, so go ahead and give it a try, and I will see you in the next video.